Hello everybody, hello, hello. A little bit late today, sorry about that. Um, we are, we were having sweat. We're back and hopefully better than ever before. So, uh, slight improvements every time and keep going in the right direction. So hi everybody. And I can put on my lab coat. <laughs> hey, hey Jenna. Hey Linda, hi everybody. Yeah, same setup, just a little bit of a different camera setup here. We'll see how it works. So, um, yeah, feedback on that. If it's uh, better or worse, we'll see. <laughs> hi, Linda. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So I can stand up now, which is a little bit more comfortable for me, and I figured that might help me also explain some of these things, and I can point a little easier. So hopefully everybody, uh, thank you for inviting people, Linda. Thank you very much. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Monday here in America and uh, had a great weekend. So let me get my computer set up so that I can watch the comments and I will try not to miss them. And we're going to talk about sound a little bit more and then we're going to go to how that leads into math. So welcome, thank you for joining and if I could get a thumbs up from anyone who's new. So if you've never been here, give me a thumbs up please. Hey, you made it. Welcome Jason. All right. So I'm going to refresh this. Aha. Okay. Oops. Oh, I lost my pin today. So last time we, um, thank you, thank you. Yes, I probably missed a couple, but I can see them. Great. Wine, awesome. Hopefully you're drinking that as well. And uh, I have this up for a reason. So this is kind of the newer version of one of uh, Apple's equalizers or you've seen these visualizers for music. And I'm going to tell you, hopefully, or explain to you, hopefully, today how that leads into math. And we're going to do that through a guy named Fourier, or Fourier in French, uh, as he was. And uh, to do that, I will turn down the music. And we'll do a brief review of what we did last time. So last time, uh, I actually made a mistake, and I hope people caught it because I corrected it in the uh, title of the Q&A afterwards. But I made a mistake and got the name switched around of the types of waves. And so, <laughs> so if uh, anyone, hopefully the names are less important to people than the actual concepts. And that's always, I think, what saved me in physics is that as long as you have the concepts correct, then you're in good shape. And then the names definitely help and make communication easier. But I'm going to make mistakes. I'm still learning, so I apologize. Anyway. To review, so we were talking about sound waves last time, making them from, for instance, a guitar. Yes, yes, <laughs> excellent. Um, so, oh, and, and just to thank you for reminding me, actually, quick quick review. So what I try to do is make, I'm trying to make this section, this short, the, the show section, um, a little shorter and more on topic. And I ask that if you have questions for this section, um, just maybe keep them on topic or, you know, and stop me. So my, my uh, system seems to be hearts if you understand what I'm saying and it makes sense. And then 42 or some other thing that you like to type to tell me that it's not and stop me, please. So if somebody stopped me on Friday, I was so excited because they, I was missing something I hadn't thought of explaining for, uh, for someone. So please do that. Um, and then thank you for the heart said. So to, uh, we can talk about the universe in the Q and A. This is my answer to that. So to review for the waves last time, we were talking about the two kinds of waves. So we have a longitudinal wave for the sound wave, and that's that pressure air wave. So when we were using our hands, then we were kind of pushing the air this way. Uh, so it's a pressure wave. Whereas the transverse wave is the string. Uh, so that makes this kind of shape, actually. Phil, hang on a second. And... Sorry, can't see the questions. One second. <laughs> that makes that ah, this kind of shape. Maybe you can't see that. So I will draw it here. It's our sine wave from the last episode. So we have this oscillating thing here. Okay, so that is creating the air pressure uh, that gives it that gets to our ears and makes sounds. And a quick reminder, so the trivia question, which I'll accept all the way till midnight tonight because I put the email up, it's um, on the website, and I got one response actually, so if Paul is watching, thank you for the response. No problem, Larry, we're just getting started. So uh, I, got the, I got one response and the trivia question was, I kind of wanted people to think a little bit, and so I was looking for examples of ways or 
times in your day or day-to-day -day life that you come across sound, um, excuse me, pressure waves transferring their energy to a transverse wave or vice versa. So um, longitudinal transferring to, to um, still getting it messed up, to transverse, transverse back to longitudinal. So as many examples as you can think of, please email me. It's at scopescience at finewoman.com. And so that's on the, the episode, episcopes part of my website. Okay, so now to sound and math. And <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that, Jason. Always adding to the, <laughs> to the class. So that is true, though. What he says is very true. That is how the sound reaches your ear. Uh, so I'm physics is everywhere. I'm not going to deny it. Uh, if we talk about the sound and we want to know what this note is on a guitar, then we have letters, at least in, in, in America and in English. Um, or no, <laughs> it's, well, we have one entry so far. So you got one person to, to you're competing against. Um, I think that was Linda. So if we go to the math of it. Now, math sounds scary for some people and or just miserable and horrible and torturous. And so I'm trying to not make it that way. And I would love to. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see yours, Jay, Jason. Uh, they have letters in. Yes, in Europe. So I was thinking of different languages. I don't I actually don't know if they represent musical notes um, with different letters. So if somebody knows, that would be great. Ah, in German. Oh, excellent. In German, there's an H for B flat. Very interesting. So, nonetheless, um, we have names for each of these notes, these frequencies that we're hearing. And so, as we said in the last lesson, we've got here, we can do the multiples of the frequency, so the fractional multiples, or just adding one or two of these, um, uh, or I should say a, a fraction of one of the waves. We can have three full, um, sorry, that's going to be two and a half versus five full oscillations. So a full oscillation is going to be from here all the way to here on the black curve. And so modes or multiples of those are called fundamentals of the frequency. So you can have two and, oh, very neat. Yeah, Bach, Bach was, um, so he came up, he, somebody can correct me and Gunnar knows about all of this. So if you, uh, I don't think, I think he's in class right now, but Oh, thank you so much. So if Gunnar is, uh, if he gets a chance, he knows so much about music. And so I hope he watches, um, or we'll chat a little bit, I'm sure, uh, with this, because this is really cool as far as the math goes. So the A, B, C, D, and E notes, or G, H in German, as we now learned. <laughs> Gunnar's the best. Um, these are just, represent. these are single representations. So you have a letter that's a representation of a note, which is a frequency. And so, okay. See, see you in a second, Linda. Uh, so that is essentially what Fourier did in math, which helped us understand uh, how waves mix together and how you can get some different shapes of waves. When you go from Dolce Tech is all I ever had. Oh, I don't know what that is, Larry. Uh, so, hey, no problem. So, um, yes, yeah, so we've got these different notes that are going to be represented by the letters. So in math, we can say we're representing our frequencies by numbers because we can use, uh, we can use the, uh, the number that represents the frequencies, or sorry, the oscillations per second, or the frequency, uh, to represent that single note. And so Fourier did a lot of the math that goes behind this. And I have a couple of interesting things I found out about Fourier. So I'm back. Um, one thing was, this was for Claire. So, um, so Claire, I don't know if you're watching or if you watched the replay, but I hope uh, I hope you catch this tidbit. So, Fourier was French, and he actually, uh, oh, oh, wrong set of notes, right set of notes. Okay, he was, <laughs> so he was Napoleon's scientific advisor, and uh, he went to uh, with Napoleon. He actually went to Napoleon to Egypt. And so he did a lot of work there. And the tidbit for Claire was what, is that he is one of the 72 names. So this is Fourier. Yes, he does rock. One of the 72 names that's inscribed on the Eiffel Tower. Uh, and he was also somewhat credited with the first to come up with the idea of the greenhouse effect or uh, the, the global warming effect, as it's called today, uh, more commonly. But that was before any of Einstein and the 
quantum mechanics came around to really confirm that effect. So he kind of had the idea and figured it seemed to make sense. So that's him as a man, that's the history. So just some interesting, interesting facts. But the really cool thing that we are going to use this for, so I have this video here. Um, is everyone with me so far? Kind of making sense? Please ask a question if, if something's not, something is not clear. Um, I would very much not like to lose people if they want to watch. And I'm going to bring the camera in here. You're, oh, thank you. That's, that is quite a compliment. So I'm going to bring this in closer, kind of like the old setup, so that you can actually see this video, because I did not think it was going to be this dark. Can, can you, anyone see that? <laughs> well, I'm, I, uh, I hope I'm doing some, some sort of a good job. Let's see. You can, can you see the red squiggle? Everybody can see the red squiggle? That's awesome. I cannot see it on this screen, so that's great. Okay, so I'm going to play this. And this is what our normal squiggle is going to look like. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, that's what I figured. Uh, so let's see. How can I... Hmm. Yeah, it's just white. Yeah, I figured. All right, let's see if we can find a... I lost my remote, too, so I don't know how to, do the, uh, to the, do the contrast. So why don't we find another video? Okay, can you bear with me one second? I'm sorry. I'm still here. And I will look at the questions as best I can here for a second. But um, let's see. So what I'm going to show you is... Monitor things. F1 to reduce. Oh, so no, this is my monitor. Um, so I don't. It, I have to actually. It's a TV thing. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, let's see. So what I'm going to show you is how to compose a square wave, and it's actually turns out to be the summation. Here we go. Maybe this will show up a little better. Don't get scared from math, please. <laughs> it's uh, it's gonna be. Still no good, huh? Terrible. Oh, I'm sorry, everybody. Didn't think this would be... Uh, ah, this will show it. So I think... Ah, there we go. This is what I wanted to see. So what they're showing here, that square wave, is actually physics, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Everybody can see, excellent, okay. So what we're showing actually is the square wave um, that is formed from many different waves. And so the other sh video had a nice, um, oh, I'm not doing this very well, the other video had a really nice slow version of it. So I'll put that on the website and uh, people can watch it there. But what this is showing is actually the fact that a square wave is made up of the adding together in phase, they call it. So where all the, the peaks um, is clipping a square wave. I don't know what cl uh, which clipping you're referring to, but um, yeah, if it's like a sharp cutoff, then mathematically speaking, yes, it's going to be the same. Um, it's going to be the same. Mathematically, it's going to be the same uh, effect. So to make that square wave, what you actually have to do is, um, oh, yeah, so I'll show the, the website. It's finewoman.com, and then you can do backslash episcopes. Um, so I'll show that quickly, just in case. Oops, sorry. So that's the website. And I'll put that on there right after. And a better video of this that shows lots of the waves that we're talking about. So for instance, in sound, if you were to take um, all of the notes in an octave and put them on top of each other and put all of the peaks lined up, then you're actually going to form a square wave. So you need um, the multiples of that same frequency. So they all have to have the points at the right at the same spot and the, the peaks and the valleys at the same spot. And when you do that, you end up with a square wave. So if you have a square wave, then the question is, how do you decompose it and find out what notes make it up? Yes, very cool, Derek. Thank you. So um, 
the notes in a scale, for instance, are going to be, yes, yeah, so in, the notes in a scale, and there are many different scales, actually, and different scales have uh, different sets of notes, but the full scale is always going to be starting from one frequency going to twice that frequency. So that's why you have a high C and a low C. It's the same uh, to your ear as far as the uh, resonance, right, but it's going to be a fundamental of that frequency, like a multiple. Um, so then uh, Fourier figured out the math to decompose those and find out what frequencies are actually being added together to make up whatever you're uh, looking at. So, and this is not just for sound, it's frequencies of everything. And it's uh, really, it's really something that you see every day and it's what you see on your equalizer, for instance. So if you're in your car, if you have one of the fancy stereos, um, maybe it's too early 2000s, but you had those stereos with the equalizers on them, and uh, it would beat along, or just like the one I was showing the visualizer, um, sorry, not equalizer, the visualizer that I was showing in the, the last one. Oh, great, okay, yeah, yeah, and Nutmeg, I'm happy, any questions, please, uh, you can email me there as well. And the different um, frequencies that are coming out of the sound, or the coming out of your music, are actually, yeah, very smart, are actually being electronically decomposed and put together as this graphic for you to see. So that is actually a mathematical representation of the music that you're listening to. So it's all done, hey Tatiana! So it's all done through that, um, through this Fourier series, and essentially all it's doing is it's saying, I have for instance, if you have a chord with three notes, then the Fourier decomposition of that would be those three notes. When you hear it, um, then you're saying it's made up of the three notes that you decide for your, for your C chord, for instance. Um, and then when you add them together, the, the summation of that, whatever that result is, um, if you're listening to it then and you look at it in time, so you're listening to these frequencies now, uh, then that is, uh, that's a different mathematical representation, but that's really all of it, it's all it's saying. Yes, and so, uh, yeah, Larry is asking questions about, so the music, so as far as the scales go, then you have to divide that octave you're talking about, um, well, oct I say octave because that's Western music, so that's eight notes, but you have to divide that doubling of the frequency into fractions, so the fractional, um, the, the, each fraction will be one of the notes within that scale. And so you can have different scales uh, divided by different fractions. And uh, that's how you get the different tones and the different kind of feels to, to music. And so um, that is essentially how Fourier relates to music and to the Eiffel Tower, since his name is inscribed on it, and sent where you're going to see it every day. Pythagoras messed with this too. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I, so. The short answer is, I don't know for sure, but it makes sense. Um, so I actually don't remember if... Yeah, I'm not sure uh, as far as history goes what times they were working on it, but uh, I can look at that and confirm it. It sounds interesting. It wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. So hopefully that was sort of interesting to people. See, uh, you can every time you see one of these kind of things on your uh, stereos and... Yes, exactly. So the, the ratios... Um, of the length of the vibration of the string. So if it's a guitar or if we were talking about um, a flute, somebody had a great question about flute because how, if you don't have strings, how are you going to make the sound uh, that, that pushes the air and hits your ear? Well, that's actually the vibration of the flute itself and with the, with the little holes that you're covering up with your fingers, that's changing the, it's like changing the string length. It's changing the, what uh, resonance, what frequencies can exist in the air pressure in that flute. So um, those are, again, so you're going to shorten and lengthen the string just a little bit by those fractional amounts uh, in order to get those different frequencies uh, from plucking the string or blowing through air through the, the flute. Yes, yeah, it, it is. It's very interesting. And it's uh, actually, they have done studies, which I also found very interesting, that people that speak uh, tonal languages, so Mandarin would be one example, and that is uh, where a language, where the, the word meaning depends on the way that it's said, so the tone, uh, the intonation rather, people that speak those languages actually tend to have much better uh, pitch, so they can actually hear notes 
and identify them just as you would identify colors, for instance, uh, much easier. So, yeah, well, so this segment, I think, unless it, people have uh, questions about this, I'll wrap this up and upload it for the replay, and then uh, if, and then I'll do the Q&A afterwards. It's a little bit more kind of relaxed. This is just kind of the, the, the show part that I wanted to put together here for Fourier and, or Fourier, if you're being proper about it in French. And if anyone has any questions on that, I'm happy to answer it. Uh, otherwise, so I'll, I'll wait the awkward silence for the delay. Otherwise, I will say happy science. Any reason why a major scale is the most popular scale? Uh, I don't know that answer other than the fact, uh, <laughs> oh, very sweet, other than the fact that it is, uh, so apparently it's a little different in Europe as far as how they called it, uh, but that was, that was the immigration that came to America, and so the population growth is probably my guess as to why, but if you go to the, uh, if you go to Asia, for instance, then the music, um, <laughs> The music sounds uh, quite a bit different because they do work on different scales, and there are different scales within the within the Western music as well. So I don't I don't know the answer why, for instance, that would be the most popular over say uh, pentatonic scale, uh, etc., or any of the um, yeah. So the pentatonic scale. Oh, I, okay. So Larry, it sounds like you know the pentatonic scale is more widespread, uh, which is interesting, and the. I think in India they have a lot of different scales that are made for the sitar, so I was learning a little bit about that as well. Uh, so that's pretty neat. But that's all about dividing the uh, the full range, that full fundamental, into fractions, um, into to pieces, and that's how you get the the sounds made of different fractions added together. So, of course, of course. And if anyone has any other questions, I'm happy to happy to answer those. I'll do another. Sometimes be oh okay okay, oh yeah. There's there's a ton of different scales. There's absolutely a ton of different scales uh, all around the world. Even in this, even in the Western types of music, there are many different scales. Uh, but it's all about how you divide up that full range of the frequency. So you're just talking about how it's divided. Yeah. So eight is is whole on yeah, and for a full octave, because you'll start at C and then end at C again. Uh, and that would be the, so you'll have the 7 and then the 8th is the C at the next octave. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know what Mixaldian is, but if you want to ask about that, please do. Um, otherwise, yeah. Any other questions? It's a mode, okay, so didn't know. Interesting, interesting. I will look that up. Thank you for telling me. Alright, so I will add or uh, I will add this to the upload. I'll do another QA, kind of more relaxed. We can talk about the universe or whatnot, or continue this conversation. And uh, check the website, I'll put that better video up on the website uh, after the QA. And again, you have until I'll until the midnight tonight to do the um, trivia. Well, trivia is sort of, but it's not so much trivia as a thinking. So if you find examples uh, around you where one type of wave is converts, uh, takes the energy but is converted into a different type of wave, please email that. Uh, so again, you can go here and you can find the email there, but it's scopescience at finewoman.com. So have a wonderful, wonderful day, everybody. And if you'd like to come back and join, we can talk about other things. And uh, have a great Monday, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye.